So the question is, you know, if electrons are wave-like, but they're also particle-like, how, how do we talk about them and how do we understand them? And that will bring us to the concept of fields in a moment, but I think it's useful to have a word for these weird objects that electrons are and that photons are. And the word wavicle was invented in the 1920s to describe them because indeed they're kind of wave-like, but they're kind of particle-like. And the thing that makes them particle-like is not that they are dots. The reason we use the term quanta, the reason we use the term particle, yeah. uh, is that they do have the property that they come in individual units. So you can't have five and a half photons. You can't have 7.23 electrons. You can only have an integer number. One, two, three, four, 100, but that's it. Yeah. Now, the waves that we encounter in ordinary life do not seem to have this property. They seem to be continuous. You could make a wave as high or as low as you wanted. In other words, you, you could take its shape and you could you know, make it bigger in this sense, or you could make it smaller, and that would seem perfectly fine. And, and, and you can imagine, you know, I could try to speak softer and softer and softer, and in principle, just keep going softer and softer and forever. Mm -hmm. And light, too. You would think I could just, you know, take the light switch if I had a dimmer switch and I could just turn it down more and more and more and uh, just gradually make the light dimmer and dimmer and dimmer as far as I wanted to go. Perfect Zeno paradox, right? Half as much, yeah. and half as much again, half as much again. But it won't work. Because in that beam of light that you're trying to dim, there are photons in it, which are waves, but nevertheless come in units. And so at some point, your beam of light is so dim that you, be, be, you begin to realize that it's actually made from individual packets, just like Einstein said individual quanta, individual little waves of light that are the photons out of which the, the beam of light is made. And it's very strange. They're waves and yet they come in units that we're not used to that. We don't experience that in life. Uh, or, or rather we do. I mean, this is how our eyes see. Our, our, the chemicals in our eye absorb photons one at a time. So our eyes implicitly know that this is the way that light works. But we humans don't have the experience of it, so we don't have a word for it. And that is why I think the word wavicle is useful, because it gives the notion that this is sort of the, the minimal piece of a wave that you can have. It's the, it's the smallest possible wave. Again, not small in the sense of length, but small in the sense of height, or amplitude, as physicists would say. And so um, uh, that... That concept is better than the concept particle because particle comes with all this baggage. And wavicle is just a new word. You don't know what it means. That's actually better because it separates the concept from, this, from its history and from this picture that you have, which is misleading. So now this word was invented in the 1920s and it disappeared. And I, more and more, I think that the reason it disappeared was Niels Bohr. Because what happened in the 20s and 30s is that quantum mechanics received its Copenhagen interpretation, in which Bohr wanted to say that electrons are particles and waves, both, and that sometimes you have to think about them as particles, and sometimes you have to think about them as waves, and don't think too hard, because it's just, you, you, you can't understand it in some sort of complete, um, uh, in some complete story, which, which doesn't have a gap in it. And... Uh, so he wouldn't have liked the word wavicle for that, uh, for that uh, particular way of thinking. And so it just didn't catch on. But some, uh, some significant people have been bringing the word back. Frank Wilczek is one of them. And uh, I sort of learned it from him. And I think it's absolutely right. It's a much better word because it captures more of what a photon or an electron is from the perspective of quantum field theory which is that it is wave-like. And the particleness comes in the fact that the amplitude of waves, the height of waves, is quantized, has to come in individual units. And you don't get that from the particles, uh, particle word. 